Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. Uh, yeah, my plan here was to bring you an unboxing, but uh, it looks like someone has beat me to it, and I suspect I know who that was. All that's left in this box is paper. Hmm, that looks like the power supply, and yeah, I think I know what he's doing with the light. Before we go there, I pulled out the instructions and took a look, and I want everybody to take careful note of all the white space on this paper. There are some diagrams, there is some text, there's a couple things. Um, yeah, but there is a heck of a lot of white space on here, and it may not seem like it's important, but it'll become important later on in the video. So let's begin. First of all, we cover up the top of the tank because we're gonna be working above it. And next, here we go with the drill. Uh, I didn't videotape all of the measurements that were taken and all the messing around trying to get it positioned correctly, uh, but nevertheless, there it is, that's where it's going. So these are big ass holes that are being drilled up there. The toggles that go in here, the screw bolts, are really, really large diameter. So get those uh, holes put in place. And there you go. That's why we use the cardboard to cover it up. So while those wing bolts are being put in place, um, let me just say this part of the installation was straightforward and easy. Didn't really require much in the way of instructions. And uh, coming up is where I'll show you where instructions would have been very, very helpful. Not that it's really something that would cause you to do it wrong, but it would have been so much easier if there had been some demonstration or diagrams to show how the next steps are carried out once these bolts are fastened in place. So here's what the wire looks like when it comes right out of the package. This is one of the two pieces that's in there. The end on the left has two strands that are attached to the two corners of the lights using those screw bolts. The other end of it is the part that goes up to the ceiling through this fitting. To adjust the length of the wire, you just grasp the fitting and pull on the excess wire to make the long section shorter, the part that goes to the light. But if you find that that's too short and you want to make it longer again, you compress this tiny spool in the middle of the fitting and pull the wire back out and it slips very easily. This isn't anywhere in the instructions. So to get the wire up through the fittings in the ceiling, it just gets fed into the bottom and out through the little hole in the side. And we've oriented these screws that are in the ceiling so those little holes face inwards because of how we're planning to manage the wire. So just pull on the wire until it's about where you want it and then screw the fitting into the screw that comes out of the ceiling. Once that fitting is tight, you can pull on that wire at the ceiling that comes through the little hole and shorten it as needed. So the next step, according to the instructions, is to quote unquote, remove the four corner screws with the hex wrench. They don't provide a hex wrench. And after going through an entire set, we discovered that the size required is 330 seconds, just to help you all out there who run into this problem. So it's pretty straightforward to attach one wire to each end of the light by screwing in the little fittings that are on the end of the short sections. This gets done on either end of the light and once that's done, you're ready for the next step. So now we're ready to adjust the height of the light. After doing some figuring out, I decided I wanted to start out with the light 14 inches off the water surface. I don't know whether I'll go higher than that. I could possibly go lower, but I really don't know yet. So in order to raise the light higher, simply pull on the cable. It goes through that little fitting quite easily. And when you've reached the height you want, just leave it sit because it'll automatically get checked because of the way that fitting is made. So we do both sides and then get ready for the next step. Bye. 
That ruler is 12 inches long and we know from checking it earlier that the cardboard itself is roughly two inches above the water surface. So that gives us the 14 inches that uh, we're looking for just by using that ruler on top of the cardboard, or at least it's close enough. For now, we've wrapped the excess wire in a coil to keep it out of the way. The power cable on the light is black and heavy, so we got this channel to help disguise it a little bit. It's a metal channel, and the reason I'm showing it to you is I wanted to show what we did to prevent the sharp edge of the metal from coming into contact with the cable. We took a vinyl hose and cut it vertically in half and just inserted it into the end of the channel. Now you can buy these kits of grommets and all kinds of bits and pieces to accomplish this, but they cost just as much as the piece of channel does. So this was our solution and it proved to work perfectly. And finally, here's how it looks. We painted the channel to match the wall. The cable emerges from the bottom and runs back across the aquarium. That yellow band is the connection to the power supply that I showed you at the very beginning of the video. So this is how we've managed that wiring.